In Psalm 37, 7, we read, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Amen. Jesus began speaking. Just remember that the curses you speak against my prophets, you are speaking against yourselves. You cannot with impunity wish evil on others without it visiting you even up to an increase of fourfold. You are wise to pray against what is planned against you for this season, my beloved, but remember, no matter what happens, I have your back. They are permitted only so much and no further. Thank you, Lord. But do pray for them. They would make wonderful Christians, Jesus continued. You see, they do not understand the principles governing love because they have not known love, not real love, self-giving, self-sacrificing love. If they had experienced this, they would turn away from cursing and reviling me and my vessels and join in the fight against evil. As it is now, some abandon the dark paths because they discovered the limitations of their power. But I want them to abandon that path because they felt my love pierce their hearts. That is why I need your prayers. With all my heart, I want them to receive my true, divine love. This is not some kind of mechanism whereby someone can overcome others with the expertise of their curses. No, this is the longing of every human heart being satisfied with love and acceptance, even to finding a secure home in my arms. If they had truly experienced my profound love for them, no longer would they seek the darkness because the light is so pleasurable and satisfying, whereas the darkness is so very bitter and threatening, causing them to be on guard at all times. Covens do fight among themselves. They do curse one another. Many of you who go about cursing others will be converting to the faith, flooding into my arms to be loved and cherished as you have never before experienced. You were cheated out of the love and protection I intended for your life. What you do not understand is that my intention was for you to have an abundance of love, nourishment, respect, and security as a child. But the very one who robbed you of that has convinced you to serve him. You see, I gave graces to your parents so that they would love and cherish you. But Satan, filled with jealousy and fury, plotted to steal that from you. So you would have a painful childhood, setting you up for bitterness and hatred later in life. Bitterness and hatred drive him to do evil night and day never getting his fill of revenge against God because he was kicked out of heaven. Some of you were violated as children, your innocence stolen from you. I did not do that. Satan plotted and arranged circumstances so that would happen, so that you would be stripped of dignity and deeply injured, deprived, beaten, cursed and feeling so bad and rejected that for the sake of your own personal survival you turn to witchcraft to get back at those who hurt you, to protect yourself in the future from others who would hurt you, and you vowed never to let that happen again. Then you were lied to and told that I was responsible for the bad behavior of others who hurt you that all Christians are hypocrites and pretend to be good but secretly do bad things. Well, sad to say, there are some people who pretend to be mine 
but are taking orders from Satan to turn you against me. There are other ones of my people who are weak and can't always do the right thing because they are selfishly attached to their own agendas. All of this is true. My people are not perfect, but they have all made the decision to try and do the right thing. Some of you were ostracized from social groups in high school because you didn't have the nice things others had, because you came from the wrong side of the tracks, because you were looked down on as being stupid, rejected by the beautiful people and the in-crowd. Many of those who were self-righteous were Christians who didn't have my heart of love for you. Rather, they shamed me by discriminating against you. I wanted them to reach out to you, but they didn't dare because they were accepted, and to befriend you would mean to be rejected by their peer group. Excuse me, Lord, but I was one of those that was rejected by the in-crowd, and I hurt very much for those who were unwanted, the ones who were last to be picked by the team. Claire, that is because you were born with a seed of goodness in your heart. Many seeds of goodness were sown in the hearts of outcasts, but they were severely abused and disrespected by their parents and family, so they carried a chip on their shoulder and had to be bigger and badder than others just to survive. I want to heal and restore them because they are broken and bruised and have no joy in their lives. My very heart aches for them every day as I see them live their lives wounded and emotionally crippled. I have taught Christian children to live unconditionally, but they judge the faults they see in others while ignoring their own faults. There are some who reject the ways I have taught them, and they have hurt others because of it. But then I have my warriors the ones who war against their own bad behavior and do all they can in their power to do the right thing. Satan hates those. But I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that Satan is a fallen angel who was kicked out of heaven because he was jealous and wanted to harm others. What I hope you will consider is that Satan is the one who set up hurting souls for a miserable childhood so they would turn bitter, want revenge, and learn his ways of hurting others. He accuses me, but he is the one who ruins families, causes divorces, lures your parents into alcohol and drugs, so they cannot be there for you. He does all this to cause you to feel victimized, until you get to the point where you either kill yourself or take up his practices of cursing, to hurt others. I am sorry for the people who said they belonged to me and yet rejected and judged you. Please forgive them for the harm they did. I apologize to you for their bad behavior. Please forgive me for their behavior. I did not teach them that. When they did that, they were inspired by Satan to do it so you would end up hating me. So now I will explain to you the quality of my real believers. First of all, they are kind. They go out of their way to do good to others, even strangers. They will not judge you for your lifestyle and choices. If you have hurt them, they will forgive you. Many of them have done the very same things before they gave their lives to me. When my true disciples give, they expect nothing in return. They never violate your person or make moves against you. They are pure. Please understand me when I tell you that those who say they represent me, priests, pastors, and leaders, if they do these things, they have fallen into the snares Satan set for them to sin. His whole existence revolves around hating me and lying about me causing my servants to stumble 
and sin so that you will hate me even more. My faithful servants will honor you, be understanding and patient, especially because they have fallen so much in their own lives. They understand human weakness and the power of sin to ensnare. They will be compassionate and encouraging and do what they can to improve your life through giving and good counsel. My servants will respect you and honor your free will and do not condemn you. They will pray for you to know me, and when you do know me, you will love me, because I love you with a love so big a thousand oceans cannot contain it. When you come to me with sorrow for how you have hurt others and sinned in the past, I will forgive you of everything and wipe away all the stains of sin from you. Then I will flood you with my authentic love and make you feel so good you will wonder why you ever thought anything bad about me. Then, if you desire my company, I will begin to speak to you and lead you out of all your troubles into a life of fulfillment. I will give you the strength to persevere. I will provide you with resources to help you live your dreams. I will show you the wonderful gifts in your soul that have been buried by hatred and anger. I will walk you out of that prison of darkness and into a sweet and fulfilling life. I will protect you from the backlash of the coven you were in. All these things I will do for you that you may have a new and fulfilling life, free from hatred and bitterness. I will frequently shower my love on you in such a way that you will feel intoxicated. I will heal those wounded places and introduce you to my saints in heaven, the ones who have been praying for you. These are all just the beginning of blessings in your lives. I love you. I want you to be in heaven with me for eternity. And I will do all in my power to help you understand just how much I truly love you. Here are a few reality checks. I am not Satan's brother. I am the second person of the Holy Trinity, God in a physical body who lived the example of the Father's heart. So you would know me. I am not a cruel God. The places in the Old Testament where entire cities were wiped out were cities where they tortured and killed infants, raped and killed children, worshipped Satan and used demons to torture and kill. I wiped them out because they were doing nothing but evil, and even their children were hybrids with demon aliens and could only do evil. Their animals, likewise, were sodomized and infected with demons. Everything they touched had been turned into evil and had to be removed from the earth. As far as suffering goes, no one suffered as much as I did to pay the price for your sins. But certain people, before they are sent into a body, have made an agreement with me that they will suffer for mankind and that their lives will be so terribly sad. But when I take them home, they will be rewarded beyond anything you can imagine. I am not the author of pain. Satan is. And I only allow his curses to land when my children need to learn lessons. Everything I do is because I love that soul. Everything I allow is turned into wonder and good in the end. You will learn more about my love for you and guidelines of protection as you grow into this new life at heartdwellers.org and also still underscore small underscore voice on BitChute and Rumble. And that was the end of his message. God bless you, dear heart dwellers. And may the Lord grant us the grace to continue to pray for the conversion of those who persecute us. Let us rejoice in his service.